Hello, I am Beth Ewing, the LSIM Parish Nurse. I hope this finds you healthy and hopeful during this difficult time. I want to lift up the topic of mental health. You don't have to have COVID-19 to be experiencing feelings like sadness, anger, depression, anxiety, or fear. I am not going to pretend to have all the answers, nor do I have it all together. Honestly, I have been struggling with our new reality and loss of control like many of you. I have felt sad, angry, very afraid, and have cried several times over the past two weeks. If you have felt some or all of these things, I believe that what we are experiencing is grief. We are grieving the loss of our normal routine, our ability to choose what we do and where we go, grieving the cancellation of future plans, celebrations, or events. Many are also grieving the loss or suspension of a job, or maybe even worried because they know, know someone who has tested positive or work in an environment where they are at risk of catching the virus. And fear of the unknown or of you or a family member getting sick only adds to these feelings. I want you to know that grieving during such times is normal. Grief is an experience that we go through following any loss. And we all must come to, come to terms with that in our own way. Kubler-Ross and Kessler defined the process of grieving and our responses to grief and loss in five stages. They are shock, and denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. Kessler has gone further and added a sixth step, which is finding meaning in the experience of loss. Not all people experiencing, experience grief in the same way, nor does anyone, everyone experiencing all of the feelings of grief or in a stepwise fashion. But arriving at a point of acceptance and the ability to find meaning in what has happened or is happening requires us to grieve in some way in our own way. So if you're angry, it's okay. Be angry. But find a productive way to express your feelings. Maybe like crying or talking with a friend or family member. Possibly through physical exertion. Listening to music, meditating, drawing, coloring, or painting. Maybe you could write out your feelings in a journal, one that no one ever has to read besides you. Holding in your anger and any of these feelings is hard on you and hard on your health. So recognize and work through your feelings the best way you can. It's all part of accepting what is going on in our world right now. And acceptance will help us to move forward in the months to come. If you are feeling depressed and need to talk to someone, please reach out because there are many resources available. If you are considering suicide, please tell someone about your feelings. You can call the Ohio Department of Mental Health Helpline at 1-877-275-6364. You can call the National Suicide Prevention Line at 1-800-273-8255. Or the local crisis line at 937 224 4646. You can also text 741 741 and ask for help. Or just reach out to a friend, family member, or member of the church. You are an important part of this faith community and we want to help. I want to share with you a few ideas of things that might keep you mentally healthy during this time of quarantine. They may seem a little trivial, but honestly, they've helped me a lot in these past couple of weeks. First, 
shower, brush your teeth, put on clean clothes every day. Open your windows and let the fresh air blow through your house if the weather allows. Or sit on your porch or go for a walk. Fresh air really does make a difference in these times of being quarantined. Eat healthy, take your medications as prescribed, and maintain control over any underlying health issues such as diabetes, hypertension, or depression. Uncontrolled medical problems can make you more at risk for getting sick. Maybe read a book, write a letter, or do a personal Bible study. Read or watch the recorded material being sent out by LSIM. There are devotions, Sunday services, Bible study on Thursday evenings. There is something being offered every day of the week. Clean something in your house that doesn't ordinarily get attention, such as a file cabinet or that junk drawer, maybe the refrigerator or the garage, maybe. Listen to upbeat music. Call a friend or a family member that you haven't talked to in a long time. Exercise. There are a lot of free exercise videos online now to do even at home. Limit your time on social media to only once a day for a small amount of time, maybe 15 minutes or less. Watch the news only once a day, again for a short period of time, or maybe even space it out and watch the news every other day. Make a list of things that you want to accomplish so that you feel like you have a goal each day, and it will help you get a sense of, of finishing something each time that you're able to check off your to-do list. Finally, remember your faith. Remember whose you are. You are a child of God now and always. With that heritage, we should always remember to rejoice, even in the small things. Rejoice first in all that God has done and is doing for us each day. If you have any COVID-19 or health-related questions, please feel free to reach out to me and ask. I may not know the answers and I probably do not, but I am happy to do the research and find out what I can for you or just talk to you through some of these, these difficult experiences. Email me at bethewing at abidingchrist.net. Thank you. I hope you have a good week and I'll see you next week. Bye.